Hi friends, welcome back to Rustic and Lace DIY. Today I have a video for you, but before we get to the video, I want to say welcome if you're new. My name is Brenda, this is my Oliver, and if you're returning, you guys are the best. So with all that being said, let's get to crafting. Okay, DIY number one. So for this DIY, I took this wood round from Dollar Tree and I gave it a two coatings, I think, of my Waverly chalk paint in the color Maze. Then I created some stripes with my painter's tape and I have these little ovals from Hobby Lobby that I painted one with my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and two of them with Waverly chalk paint in the color white. I then took a, uh, I think this is one of my glue sticks and uh, one of my m white, uh, paint markers and I am tracing out my glue stick to make two circles and this is on the black oval that I painted and then I'm using that same paint marker to color in the eyes but <laughs> it wasn't working too well I don't know what was going on so um, I ended up just getting my paint out and just going over all of that with my white chalk paint after that I took my red chalk paint crimson by Waverly and I'm using a very small paintbrush and I'm just making kind of like an oval for a nose and if you haven't been able to tell this is going to be a B. <laughs> I took my white marker and I am creating the mouth and then I um just I wanted to make some little more circles inside the eyes with black so I took a smaller little tube of glue, I don't even know where that came from, that I had in a Sharpie to trace it out and then I'm using my black uh, paint marker to color it in. I did end up adding a little dot in the of white in the eyes too. Then I used that little glue thingy and some uh, pink marker but I didn't like that color, that was too bright. So I took this paint that I had here and I went ahead and painted over that and painted in some cheek colors for my little face here and now this um idea i got from pinterest i saw a a wood round that someone's selling on etsy that kind of looks like this um so i did copy the face off of there but everything else is pretty is different is my own take on it but i took the white ovals and i made some little stitch lines around them and then i'm using my wood glue and hot glue and I am gluing these onto the, well, I, yeah, that's the face. I'm gluing that onto the bottom here, okay? So the wood round is the body. Oh, and there's my Oliver. Um, and I am taking these white ones are the wings. And then, of course, we have the face down on the bottom. Now, the one on Pinterest was all painted in, but, um, yeah, I thought it would be fun to do more like a 3D effect. So I did that and then I made some little antennas for the B. And then um, I made some, a few little just black polka dots. Now, as I was doing this, I got more inspired and wanted to do something even diff more different. So I took these little wood planks from Dollar Tree. I painted them both with my Waverly chalk paint in the color Maze. I then created these stencils with my Cricut and I'm going over them with my uh, chalk paint, my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. Now, if you don't have a Cricut, you could still create this. You can use stickers. On my last video, I showed how to do reverse stenciling with Dollar Tree stickers. Um, you can use a stencil. Uh, I know Dollar Tree has alphabet stencils. You could use those. Um, you can get an alphabet stencils at any craft store. Uh, and again, you could use stickers. Um, you, you could do many things you, you could even just write it if you wanted but I'm going to remove my stencil here and then I had put I had created a stencil for the wood sign as well and I'm going over this one with my Waverly chalk paint in the color white and then I'm going to remove that stencil and dry it and then I remove the step that's in the middle then I used my painter's tape because I wanted to make two stripes on the ends of this and I um they're, the stripes are half inch and wide and half inch apart. So my painter's tape was an inch. So I kind of had to do this uh, in steps. So I painted the first stripe, dried it, and then I used my ruler here to make sure my tape was even. And then I made another stripe a half an inch away from where that uh, 
stripe was. And then I am just going to, I'm just measuring, making sure it's a half inch there and that it's even, it wasn't, so I adjusted it, now it's even, and then I'm just gonna paint it again and then um, dry it after that. I'll remove the tape and dry it, but I did this on both of these little signs. And then this, I glued my um, ribbons. I did end up having to use my heat gun to release that glue and change it because it was crooked after I hung it. I realized it was crooked. But um, I am just going to glue those signs onto my ribbons. So I, when I redid it, I did it with it facing me so I could see. And I moved those ribbon uh, pieces in closer together so they weren't so far apart. I don't know what I was thinking. But anyways, I'm just going to glue my signs um, or glue the ribbon to the back of my signs. And then I dovetailed the ends of the ribbon. And you guys, this thing is so adorable. I absolutely love this. In fact, I'm thinking I might put this in on the front of my guest room door because I think it would be so cute. But um, uh, I just love this. This is just so adorable. You'll have to see it. Anyways, um, what did I do when I get done with this? I think I thought this, oh, I have to add a, a hair. <laughs> so I just use some, I have, um, you know, some more of that ribbon from Dollar Tree and I'm just poking it through. I had to put tape on the end, of course, and then uh, poke it through the holes and then tie my knots, get it to the length that I wanted cut off the excess and tie the other knot and we have a hair that matches the bottom and I just think it's adorable look at how cute that is oh my goodness I can't get over it it is so adorable you have to let me know what you think about this in the comment box below Okay, I want to take this moment again to thank you guys as my subscribers. You guys mean the world to me, and I appreciate you so much. If you're new here and you enjoy today's video, please make sure you hit that red subscribe button before you go. And then if you guys wouldn't mind giving me that thumbs up and comment and watching those ads, that really does help me. And I am coming up to my 20,000 uh, milestone. I'm less than 900 away. I am asking for your help. I would love to reach that challenge before my birthday which is on May 7th so if you guys wouldn't mind sharing this video with people that you think might like it um, if you have friends or family that you think might like it share it with them share it on your social media whatever and if you're watching and haven't subscribed yet and you've watched many times what are you waiting for hit that red subscribe button help me get reach this milestone it'd be a great birthday present for me and I would truly appreciate it okay DIY number two so I took this book stack from Dollar Tree. I've had it in my stash for a while. And I really, I thought this was all painted on. And I realized, no, this is all paper. So I'm going to just remove the paper like I normally do, spritz it down with water, and then scrape it off. Now, I've had a few people ask me why I don't just paint over that paper. Um, you could definitely do that. I've seen some creators do that. I like my stuff to be... Um, a clear slate, I guess you could say, because so I don't know, I might end up selling this stuff one day if I can figure it out. Um, and if not, give it away. And I want my stuff to look good, like it's been purchased somewhere. I don't want it to peel off because that's what I worry about. And a lot of times with Dollar Tree stuff, their papers um, um, overlapping the edge and you can easily pair it, uh, tear it off. So that's just the way why I do that. As you can see, I kind of broke it. It kind of fell apart on me. So I added some multi-purpose glue and hot glue there to put it back together. And then I painted it with my maze. I created this decal with my Cricut and I'm just going to add it to the side of my book stack. And um, yeah, <laughs> anyways, once I get this all on, it says, don't worry, be happy. I'm going to do something else that I... I saw something like this. It wasn't on a book stack with this bee on Pinterest. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that is the cutest idea. So in the meantime, I went ahead with a small brush here and going through the edges with the black because when I painted it, it was all yellow and it didn't really look as much like a book stack. So I took one of these bees. I think I got these from Michael's and I'm filling in the hole and then I'm going to paint them. And I'm painting the stripes uh, with my ink and then I'm going to um, 
this was kind of challenging. I, you know, I remembered as I got this, this is why I didn't like these bees because they're just kind of weird with the stripes. But <laughs> I just went with it. Um, I'm going to paint the middle part of my bee with my yellow. And then I am going to um, paint the wings white. And I guess I'm going to sit here and show you all of my painting so that you can see how I did it. But honestly, I feel like it's, it, I don't know, there's something different with it than with your normal bees. But uh, I still think it came out really cute. So anyways, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to paint the wings white. And I'm trying to be very careful here so that I didn't because I didn't tape anything down. I did paint the antennas with my black. And then after this, after it was all dry, you'll see me next, I'm gonna um, paint a face. So I'm giving it two little white eyes. And then I am going to make a little nose and a mouth with the Sharpie. And then I took my Sharpie and I just kind of traced out where the white and the yellow met. I just thought it kind of brought it to life a little bit more. And then I went ahead and made some little stitch lines around the the wings. Um, I was just trying everything I could to just kind of bring it to life a little bit more. And I think, yeah, I put some black dots in the eyes, made a few little eyebrows. I just kind of kept playing around with it until I got it to where I thought I it was decent. So I have this 16 gauge wire. I think I got this like at Lowe's or Home Depot. I cut some of it off just using my wire cutters. I'm using my little pokey tool here to poke a little hole in the top of this. And then I'm going to wrap that wire. I should have made it a little longer because in my mind I wanted it to be curled more, but it's still, this thing is so cute, you guys. So I am just, I curled it and then I had to kind of straighten the bottom part of it so it could stand up a little. And then I'm going to poke it in my hole. And then I was like, okay, how am I gonna get this to stay in the hole? <laughs> How am I going to get this to stand and not just lean over? So I took my hot glue here and I am just going to kind of hold it in place with that hot glue. And then I added hot glue to the back of my bee. And I wasn't sure how this was going to work because metal and hot glue don't usually work well together. But I just covered it with the hot glue and then I added that little ribbon piece to it. And then I am going to take some of this uh, honeycomb ribbon that I got from... Dollar Tree, uh, I don't know if it was last year or the year before. I think I still see it every once in a while there, so you might check it if you're looking for it. And I'm just going to glue this around my book stack. And then I'm going to take the ribbon that came off of it, and I'm just going to kind of um, glue it on the sides a little bit just to keep it straight and tight because I'm going to tie this um, a bow. And it, it was loose. And if you saw how it just came off at the very beginning it was that loose so I didn't want it to fall off so I just kind of tacked it down with a little bit of hot glue and then I'm just going to make a little bit little bow here oh my goodness you guys this is so cute I just love that little bee even though I think he kind of looks like a twinkie <laughs> a twinkie with the uh, wings but it's so cute um I took some daisies here and I'm just going to glue them around my where that uh wire goes into my little book stack here and oh you guys I just love this it's so so cute now the original piece that I saw on Pinterest this was coming out of a wood piece that had blocks that said buzz and I just thought having this book this uh bee flying off of the book would be so adorable and I just love this and look how cute that is you have to let me know what you think about this one as well Okay, it is a time for celebration of your recreation. And I got these from Lori. These are beautiful, Lori. You did an amazing job. I love them. Thank you so much for sharing. And if you have a creation or recreation that you would like me to showcase, you can send pictures to my email address that's listed there, or you can send them to me through Instagram or Facebook Messenger. Okay, DIY number three. So for this DIY, I'm going to take one of these uh, wall tiles. You guys, this is my third one I tried this on. I cut out a honeycomb shape from with my Cricut because I had on the other two tried to draw it out and cut it out and it looked horrible. So I'm like, okay, this just looks like crap. So I ended up just using my Cricut. Um, 
If you want to recreate this and you don't have a Cricut, hopefully you can draw it out better than I can or find something that's similar in shape. <laughs> so I'm just tracing it out here. And then I'm going to cut it out with my scissors. I didn't keep the heart part that was on the top. That was really cute. Now And afterwards I was like, oh, I probably should have. I think that would have been really cute. But I took this folk art lemon. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't see what that color was. Um, and I painted it white and then I went over it with that lemon color just because that's an acrylic color and I knew I would have had to do like three coats. Then I took this color and I am just kind of going over the raised areas with it. Now after the words I was like oh this wasn't as dark I was wanting a little more of a brown but you know what it still looks really good and I still liked it. So I just went over all the raised areas with that color and then I just let it dry. And if you are wanting, oh, I used one of these, uh, these are fairy doors. I got a, a couple of years ago from Amazon, some wood fairy doors and windows and haven't even used them yet. So I thought this would be perfect. So I painted the backside with my black chalk paint. And I was going to say, don't use your heat gun or if you do have it on low on that wall tile because it will melt it. And yeah. And I know that too from experience. <laughs> um, I am just going to use my e no, my uh, Fix-All Glue and Hot Glue to glue that on so that we have a little door to my beehive. And then I added this little bee I had um, in my stash from Amazon. I do think it's in my store. And then I'm just making some little fly marks, I guess you call them. I don't know. I took my one and only my last uh, wood canvas that I got from Dollar Tree when they were getting rid of them and I painted the inside white and then the outside with my yellow my maize color once they were dry I went over the middle part with a heavy dose of Mod Podge because I'm going to use some fabric from Dollar Tree so I have this fabric I have quite a bit of fabric from Dollar Tree that I need to use so I thought this would be perfect time to use one I cut it out it's got all these pretty little bees on them I think it is so cute and I'm just smoothing it all out and just kind of pushing it into the glue, pushing along the edges um, and just kind of trying to smooth out any wrinkles and then just pushing it down into that Mod Podge and, uh, until I felt like it was adhered very well and there was no bubbles. Then I went over it again with another coat of Mod Podge and then I let it dry. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I did, oh, I, did cut uh, off the excess as well once it was dry. Then I took this twine. I get this from Amazon. It's the braided one that I love so much. And I am just going to glue it all around my picture frame just to kind of help cover up those raw edges from when I had to cut it down. Um, and the reason why, well, yeah, and that's another story in itself. But anyway. <laughs> I forgot to cut the material out until after I had the Mod Podge on there uh, on the board and I'm like oh shoot I didn't lay it down so I could cut it out so yeah <laughs> that's why I kind of did the way I did so I just used my tight bond multi-purpose quick and thick multi-purpose glue and my hot glue and I'm going to glue this to um, my fabric now I did not use my fix-all glue because when I did my little cherry thing it came off and I think that the Mod Podge in that fix-all glue doesn't work well so that's why I tried using my multi-purpose glue. So I went through all my stuff and I found my um, Scrabble tiles that I got from Amazon in a huge bucket of them and I decided to spell out Hive's Sweet Hive and put that on the top using my hot glue. Then I'm going to make a messy bow with some of these ribbons. I just cut out four of each and I'm just crisscrossing them. Um, all of them except for the one with the little flowers that uh, came from Dollar Tree. The one with the flowers I think came from Hobby Lobby. And uh, I'm just crossing them as I go and kind of alternating them. And then I'm going to tie some twine around the middle and then we have a little bit of a messy bow. I know there's probably other ways of making this look fuller, um, but I didn't want anything real big because I was afraid it would cover up my hive sweet hive so I just made it small I dovetailed the ends there and then I'm going to add a bee to the middle of my bow and then I just uh, use some more of that twine tied knots on the ends and cut it down I wanted it I didn't want it to be hanging to where you saw the twine so I'm just stapling it to the back and it's it's tight enough that 
you can put it on a nail or whatever and it sits. So there it is. <laughs> I think it's really cute. I love that fabric. Anyways, you have to let me know what you think about this one as well. And if you haven't guessed this video, it's all about bees. <laughs> okay, DIY number four. So for this DIY, I took one of those wood blocks from Dollar Tree. I painted it white and this hello sign, I think I got this from Walmart. I paint it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink, which is basically black. So I'm going to, once it was dry, I went over my block with some Mod Podge and I just did this on the front side. And then I took this adorable tissue paper. I got this last year from Amazon. It came in a huge pack, you guys. I've got, I'm going to have this for the rest of my life. Um, and I laid it out. And I'm using my uh, parchment paper and heat press to reactivate that Mod Podge so my tissue paper sticks. And then I am going to trim off the excess and cover it again with Mod Podge, let it dry, and then I will sand off the excess with my finger sander. Now, I did. I think I forgot to mention that when I do hit my 20,000 subscribers, I am planning on having a few giveaways. And I think I will put some of this in that give, those giveaways because um, I... Uh, I've got so much of it <laughs> and it's so cute. Anyways, I'm using my wood glue and uh, hot glue here to attach my sign, my hello sign. This is just a, kind of a simple craft that doesn't necessarily scream bees, but because of that paper, you get the drift and I just think it's so cute. And I just placed my hello word in the front there. And then I um, took another bee and I laid it out and I thought, okay, I'm going to have a trail. I wish I would have thought this out a little better. I would have had the trail all over the letters and I kind of, um, I'm kind of doing it here and I'm just like, oh, I should have started at the H and just kind of went all the way around. So it looked like the bird, the B was flying all over my letters. I did kind of do it because I'm like, do I, do I change it up or do I just leave it like this? And I'm like, well, oh, let's just change it up. So I'm just kind of playing, trying to figure out how do I want to make it look like it, you know, crossed itself or whatever. So it looks really cute, except for the O looks a little blank because I didn't get it all the way around the O. But I just think it's really cute. I added some of this uh, ribbon all around the top, the sides and the top. I didn't do the bottom because I, I want it to stand on its own. And I think that's all I did. I didn't add a bow. I just thought I did glue that little bee on and oh look how cute that is. I love it. That bee was going crazy flying all around that hello word. <laughs> oh my goodness. You'll have to let me know what you think about this one as well and which one was your favorite today. And if you think you're going to recreate any, let me know if you'd be interested. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in another bee the uh, video because I had so many more ideas, but I ran out of time and I was really bummed and I really want to make those other ideas. So let me know if you'd like to see another bee themed video. I might have one for you on Thursday if you do. So with all that, you guys make sure you hit that red subscribe button if you haven't already like thumbs up comment all that fun stuff and with all that being said i hope you have a blessed beginning of your week and i will see you on thursday so i'll see you on the next one Bye bye